Hi there, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content, process, and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is Enterprise Search, a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. Application Search refers to the search function that comes built into particular applications, like email, repositories like records management, or systems like desktop search. For example, this slide shows the search that lives inside of Mozilla Thunderbird. When you search within an application, you're only searching the information that's managed by that particular tool. There's also search on the Internet, Google being the most popular example. This is a form of application search in that these tools are integrated into the web and provide search across the many websites. Now, among the advantages of this kind of search is that it's made available directly in the context of the business application, as opposed to being offered as a separate capability. The interface, thus, is inherently more intuitive as it behaves like a feature of the business application itself. It may also understand and respect the application's security and access model, meaning that a search within a financial application would allow you to access only those documents that you're allowed to view which it would know from your system login or authentication. On the downside, application search works only on the information contained within the application, and it may not be as feature-rich as best-of-breed alternatives. Parametric search is a primary and fundamental example of rules-based search, also called fielded search because it refers to metadata fields within databases or content repositories it operates on attributes that have been predefined in the given data sources. For example, imagine that I'm looking for a woman's size 8 red shoe with a 3 inch heel. These are the specific parameters that I'm querying on, and particular elements in my repository have been populated with values that I can then search, like gender, which is women's, article, which is shoe, size, 8, color, red, and heel size, which is 3 inches. Parametric search provides the highest level of precision on a query. The drawback, however, is the query capability is strictly limited to the fields that are declared. And you have to be conscious not only of which fields you want to be searchable, but also whether those parameters align with what users will need or want to query on. Keyword search is a specific form of parametric search, as it's based on one or more fields. These fields, though, contain user-declared words or phrases that represent concepts within the content. We use them all the time, and even set them up ourselves in such simple examples as the one shown, in which we characterize the bookmarks we create when browsing the web. Under this approach, database fields are populated with words and phrases that have been associated with the targeted content. These words and phrases are used to represent the overall meaning and value of the content. Thus, and this is important, these keywords don't necessarily have to be represented as words within the document. For example, a document reviewer may assign the keyword or phrase World War II to a document that discusses the alliance between Stalin, Churchill, and FDR. Nowhere in the document is the phrase World War II actually mentioned, but the human reviewer made that deduction and imposes this concept onto the document via the keyword. One value of keyword searching is the ability to impose human-based knowledge into the system, providing context and insight about the bodies of content that are not overtly present in the content itself, and making that available to the searcher. Another value of keyword search is its ability to be applied to any form of content, not just text-based documents, but photos, images, videos, audio, virtually anything. There are drawbacks, however, starting with being reliant on human beings to analyze each body of content and determine the keywords. This leads to inflexibility because it depends on the words and phrases chosen by the indexers, and items can be missed if there are different perspectives and vocabularies. Rather than using ranking algorithms to predict relevancy, semantic search identifies content on the basis of what words mean, not merely their existence in a document. 
It's also known as natural language search. In most cases, the goal is to deliver the information queried by a user rather than have a user sort through a list of loosely related keyword results. A related discipline is known as pattern search, which looks at things like how often certain words are used, in what proximity to each other, and in what order to determine which results are relevant. This analysis is based either on prior knowledge or statistical information it extracts from the patterns. Statistical search uses mathematical algorithms to determine the overall context of the meanings contained within information. Encompassing many techniques, such as Bayesian probability, it uses many different algorithms that are typically proprietary and not modifiable. Because statistic-based approaches are not based on words, they are more flexible than approaches based on linguistic rules, and they typically can be applied to many different languages and forms of content. However, it's not an exact science, and the results are not necessarily predictable. So it's important to determine whether it mirrors human judgment well enough to fit the business setting it's to be used in. Statistical approaches are now embedded in almost every search engine, although some rely on them more than others. They often make their effect known in terms of determining the relevancy of retrieved results in a process known cleverly as relevancy ranking. Concept and fuzzy search take the user's inputs and broadens them outward to include other terms that relate in terms of meaning, spelling, phonetics, and more. It therefore is more forgiving than the more literal forms of search like keyword and can be more flexible as well but it also can generate longer lists of results, so a balance must be struck before information overload occurs. For example, a query for the word fast would automatically locate documents containing such related concepts as quick, speedy, and rapid. Another example is one in which a query on the word walk would include variations such as walks, walked, walking, and walker. The highest level of concept searching is concept clustering, this functionality is provided through many different proprietary algorithms and approaches that share the ability to holistically analyze each document in the corpus. The result is that each document is profiled according to the topics or concepts it addresses, and then compared to all the other documents in the collection. In the end, the collection is organized into a series of separate but overlapping concepts. Users' queries are analyzed in a similar manner, and retrieval is based on how similar the profile of the user's query is to the document profiles. Rounding out this litany of types of search is social search, which, as the name suggests, takes users' social business activities into account and looks at things like blog tags applied, social rankings, news feeds, podcasts, knowledge sharing, and colleagues' search activities when executing a search. Google Plus is now making use of this kind of search utility. According to the website, anytime you share a link on Google Plus, any of your friends finding that link using Google will see that it was identified by you. The idea is that content from your friends and acquaintances is sometimes more relevant and meaningful to you than content from any random person. That's how Google put it on its social search site, and social search of all stripes takes this into account by evaluating not just relevancy, but relevancy to you. This module has taken us on a tour of the seven major types of functional search. Application, parametric, keyword, semantic and pattern, statistical, concept and fuzzy, and social. Next, you may wish to review the module on search engine optimization. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the Information Certification Exam. This proctor test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.